Hey, hello! This is another episode of, uh, what is the show called? Genesis or Genesis, Genesis isn't? Where I play yeah. some old Genesis games and then I tell you if they're any good or not. Uh, based on about 30 minutes of gameplay, so it's totally fair and a great way to uh, determine the quality of things. Uh, I'm Eric Allen, I'm here with Joe Drilling, as always. As always. And we have a special guest. Um... David, David, I don't know your David, last name. David Oxford. <laughs> yes. Thank David you. Oxford of, of many places around the internet, but for the purposes of this show, of Mega Visions Magazine. Hey, hey. How's it going? Hey, uh, uh, it's uh, going all right over here, except like my draws in uh, Fire Emblem Heroes kind of suck. So I'm sorry to hear that. John LaSalvia. Gotcha upon uh... mobile games, man. That's how that yeah. shit works. Um, so mm. what am I playing tonight, David? You Actually, like David I was going Dave, to ask, what, what are you, you playing? What do you like to go by? Uh, whatever's fine. David's good. Okay. Um, I had a curiosity. Are you playing the uh, actual Genesis version? or? I mean, this is on. This is a ROM of the Genesis version. Oh, okay, I'm there's like Fusion a... Fusion version, whatever, 3.6 five or something whatever the newest one is okay i just didn't remember that credit screen that we saw a moment ago because there's like three different versions of the game and they've got different levels in each one. Oh, really it, yeah there's a, a pc version uh that's uh, infamously known for coming with uh i think it was sonic and knuckles or something yeah, yeah i saw that uh, in the, and when sonic i was doing knuckles. some research that there is a pc version of this game that came out like six months after the uh the Genesis and the Game Gear version. Yeah, and the Game Gear, yeah. yeah. And, like, there, there's some different levels, like, scattered among them, but they're largely the same game, same objective, that kind of thing. What the fuck am I looking at right here? I don't know if, you, I don't know if you're watching the stream or not, but there's, like, this... Oh, absolutely. This boot screen with all these... I guess this is, like, my key to what I'm looking for in this level or whatever. Yep. Way okay. marker is your checkpoint. TV remote is your goal. Coffee okay. is invincibility. Mallet keys open a bonus stage. Uh, the burgers and pizza are your uh, health and yeah. ammunition. Each stage, uh, well, you'll see, but okay. uh, you'll have uh, ammunition that you use. And yeah, these are each stage has like different, stages. different type of ammunition. Uh, I, I forget what extra all life right, does. All right, so let me, first of all, <laughs> there's one thing that seems a little fucked up there, and that there's burgers and pizza, but, uh, but no one lasagna. particular food item that Garfield is uh, famous for enjoying, and it's not included in the health uh yeah, health yeah no, la no lasagna. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to remember if there was, like, actually something to that, but I, I don't think there was. <laughs> uh, it's uh, just hard to make it, like, the, the iconography the, the, the of lasagna would be, like, is... God mode. Garfield would yeah. just, you know, go into overdrive. And, yeah, maybe invincibility you know, should cheat. be that instead of coffee. I don't know. I, I <laughs> like that the all of the pickups are done with, like, shitty, like, sub-Donkey Kong Country level, you know, like, um... CG scanned to become sprites. Right. Um, I mean, this I did come out in 1995, so... Uh, yeah. This is pretty late, then, in the gen... Like, like, this is post-Saturn, right, Genesis? Uh, yeah. Right Genesis. around that time. Yeah, 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 right around Genesis that time. Genesis came Saturn, out yeah. in May. May of 95 is when the U.S. launch of the Saturn was. The surprise U.S. launch of the Saturn. <laughs> okay, all right, I see. I'm in the TV, and then I... Okay, I hit this. And then this so this TV. game is basically Is this, like, Gex. a hub level, then? Yeah, it's kind of a hub in that, like, you know, you have to get to the next stage uh, through here, but you can't choose stages. Oh, Count Slobula. That is a Garfield-ass Garfield joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, so this, like, seriously, oh. this is this is Gex, except with Garfield. Right. Did this come out before? <laughs> when did the original, when did OG Gex come out? I think before this, actually, because Gex was a 3DO game originally. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was after. Um... Yeah, yeah, November 1994. Okay. The, I mean, uh, this there were like old cartoons good. where characters went into the fantasy world of whatever books, <laughs> TV, uh, video games. Master, so you're saying this is the Page Master with Garfield. Right, yeah. Okay. That's one way of looking at it. Yeah, this was actually a level that uh, made me include this a couple of years ago on a list of, like, you know, just my favorite kind of uh, spooky video games. <laughs> Um, I do. I do really enjoy spooky levels in non-spooky games. Uh, yeah. I've long right. so thought this, about. So is this like a? Oh. I'm, not, I'm not a huge horror fan, but I do like spooky stuff. Right. So you know, it's like pop culture vampires and Simpsons. Yeah, basically. Uh, episodes of The Simpsons. Uh, 
little Halloween. more Castlevania than Resident Evil. Yeah. So, so David, why? Uh, I know why because I was on the email thread. But tell tell <laughs> our our viewers why this game. Why was this a game that you suggested? As you gave us a list of games to pick from, and I was sort of feeling cruel uh, to Eric because <laughs> <laughs> I gave him a good game last week, and so I was like, well. I, I, I would dispute that this is a bad game, but uh, all the same. Um, uh, the reason I had... Honestly, this is the, basically the game that kind of uh, told me, like... It was like the tail end of the Genesis uh, Super NES era, as we've noted here. Uh, granted, the Nintendo 64 hadn't quite come out yet. Um, but I was a huge Garfield fan as a kid. I still kind of am. I mean, I know Garfield isn't... He's not what he used to be. I'll readily admit that. Uh, but at the time, I mean, Garfield and Friends was still a big thing, and um, just this was the one that was like, if there was a Garfield game coming out, I was getting it. Uh, Sega was making it, so it obviously wasn't going to be on Nintendo. So this was basically, okay, I'm getting a Genesis. Because <laughs> up to that point, I'd basically played on a Friends Genesis, like if I ever needed my fix. Right. I'm but curious, this, was, how, this pushed um, me over. How old are you? Are you a little bit younger than I am? I'm like 34, I think. You think you're 34? I'm, I'm going to say no. <laughs> okay. Because Garfield is like definitely something that I was way into when I was like between like 6 and 10, I would say. So this would have come out after I had kind of lost interest in Garfield. But I feel like there's a, a like a shitload of people like like Garfield is a really good like early childhood like um foundational like funny thing and that it's not actually really funny by adult standards and it's really simple and the very formulaic but when you're six like that's kind of what you need like that is probably around the time i actually first got into garfield yeah and the funny thing is i mean a lot of the uh, earlier strips especially uh you still see it on occasion um but like a lot of the earlier strips actually did kind of have like more of an adult i guess I don't want to say an adult focus, but definitely aimed a little older than, like, you know, say maybe Garfield and Friends or the specials did. I mean, you've probably seen some of the stuff online, like, uh, well, you I've, know, John dude, uh, I, drinking I have something at the vet's office. I have a and... box in, like, my parents' garage uh, in the attic that has, like, every collection of Garfield comics from the first compilation until, like, the 23rd one or whatever when I stopped being interested in it. Oh, I've, um, got, I've got a bunch myself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I haven't looked at them probably in 15 years, but... Um. So, Poverty Game Night says he really... Yeah, I see, he says, I actually really like the look of this game. Yeah, it looks really and good. I the animation is really yeah. good. It's this is really one of those late, late era, as we've said already multiple times, late era, so I think, and developed by Sega. So, you're sort of at that point where they've mastered the hardware and they're able to make it look really excellent. All these sprites animate really well. Yeah, like As I, recall, I really like the the design on Garfield too. Like his uh, his like little uh, vampire slayer outfit. His uh, what's the right. what's the guy's name from Dracula? Van Helsing. Yeah. Have you have you let him stand still for a second? Um, no, I haven't checked out any idle animations. But but yeah, I believe that uh, as I recall, uh, Paws Inc. Uh, the you know studio that makes Garfield, uh, they had a hand in this. They're usually pretty hands on with this kind of thing. I'm sure they did not have a hand in a week of Garfield for the Famicom, though. <laughs> Probably not. Because that game is utter garbage. But this was the Sega Technical Institute. Yeah, STI did some really, really great work. Um, and I feel like it's kind of a shame that they... Mark Cerny, who designed the hardware for the PlayStation 4, was um, one of the uh, head people at um, oh. Sega Technical Institute. So do I tell you what you need to do? Uh... I think I figured it out on accident. <laughs> You're probably like ten to twenty seconds behind me, but I think I get, I think I figured it out. Although I don't think I'm gonna. Okay, yeah, there you go. I don't think I'm gonna beat Garfield. Like, uh, I don't know if I like that. Like, that's something that should have been. Like, that's the first time you can interact with something in the background in an environment, and that's something that they could have communicated earlier in the level. Well, you've so. been interacting with background stuff on the way, mainly the uh, tongue stuff, but. On those uh, tongue yeah, I guess, but there's no uh, like those look like a lever, and also you hit those when you fall down the hole the first time, and like this, True. Th True. there should be something more indicative of, like, hey, this is a thing you can interact with, 
in interact with, I feel like. Because um, it just kind of looks like background elements, but... Um, so... Anyway. So, David, uh, I don't want to... I, I mean, we usually talk about the game quite a bit, but I do want to talk a little bit about Mega Visions, since that's part of the reason that we in invited you on. Um, sure. What's up with Mega Visions? How is it? Is it so? Is it is the are the folks working on Mega Visions the same folks who uh, worked on, are working on Nintendo Force? Is that the same sort of cadre or not? Really? Nope. Uh, it's I'm pretty much the only uh, overlap that I can think of offhand. Oh, okay. Uh, the um, guys who uh, came up with uh, Mega Visions are from a site called Sega Nerds. Okay. And you know, I found out about the Kickstarter, and it's like. Uh, Sega's kind of a, been a growing fascination of mine over a number of years, and uh, you know, I, I was like, you know what, I would like, I'd like to get in on this. So, and, and it is an actual print magazine, or it's no, just... it's uh, it's digital. It's okay, so it's okay. Works on uh, desktops, uh, tablets, and phones. Okay, it's got some interactive elements to it too. So. Very David nice. Perry or Earthworm Jim kind of Aladdin esque death animations. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. Which is that. another like thing I greatly associate with like the mid '90s <laughs> video game design. Um, so so, sell me on uh, on Mega Visions, David. Oh wow, um, <laughs> that's above my pay grade. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> um. Wow, it's uh, basically a digital magazine for the Sega lover, past, present, future. We uh, have retrospectives. We got some talent and stuff uh, in there. Some names you might recognize: uh, Patrick Scott Patterson. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't call Patrick. Don't call me Patrick Scott Patterson. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, Blake uh, Harris, who wrote the uh, Console Wars book, uh, has, does some stuff on there. Uh, so far, each month we've had. Um, some actual uh, dialogue, like which you can actually listen to or read. It's uh, stuff from Al Nilsson, uh, former, I think he was uh, VP of marketing, and uh, Tom yeah, Kalinske, yeah. who was the head of SIG of America during the, uh, you know, their most prominent uh, era. I'm uh, actually, era. I'm and, really and they, surprised. They stuff. At, yeah, I'm really surprised at how sort of comfortable Tom Kalinske is with his. Um, history as you know sega of america ceo um like i don't know what he does now or maybe he's retired but i know. believe it, i believe his most recent I, I i think it's leapfrog he's like president or ceo oh, okay. or some high ranking position of uh i'd have to check on uh, twitter to see but uh yeah but he's like he tweets about his history with sega like because I, I also follow him on twitter and like he gives interviews and stuff with with like sega fan sites like he's totally not at all bashful about his you know his his past as uh sega of america ceo near as i can tell he's uh pretty he's uh pretty happy with the time he spent there just you know things kind of went bad towards the end right well it seemed like japan was really sort of um like enforcing their will you know they'd sort of let the america like when it was michael katz before it was tom kalinsky and then even under tom kalinsky japan had sort of let sega of america do whatever they wanted and especially after yeah. it initially proved successful they were like well let's, and then they sort of were like nah not anymore now we want to do now we want you to do what we want you to do yeah they, that's they, like kind of where he got out if if i remember the story correctly yeah basically just uh they didn't like being shown up in japan that that was the, the i mean uh, so console wars is the next book on my shelf so right now i'm actually i'm reading like a you know medieval fantasy setting novel right now and when i'm done with that i'm gonna read console wars um <laughs> but you know you could probably write an entire book not even about sega versus nintendo but about how badly sega was mismanaged between their success with the genesis in north america and their eventual you know bailing out of the hardware market after the Dreamcast, because um, it's just such a shit show. You know, it's like it's like the history of yeah. WCW. You know, it's like you're just like <laughs> how, how you were super successful and you just shit it all away in like a pretty small window of time. And yeah. it's just spectacular how you managed to do that. That's always been my comparison. Oh. So let's see if 
like I've always kind of like had the association, like you know, Nintendo, Coke. WWE, um, and then you've got like WCW, Sega, Pepsi. Yeah, but Pepsi uh, hasn't like totally fucked up their business model, right? Like, yeah, Pepsi's I'll, still I'll a very successful that. company. They're just second place to to. Yeah, De- definitely. I, I guess in a way, maybe uh, Time Warner and uh, Pepsi might be more comparable in that regard. <laughs> right. Eat but, it, baby. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's Count Slobula, sir. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm just thinking, like, you know, okay, like, you know, uh, would that make, um, oh, who's the guy who came in from Sony, uh, like, you know, uh, to, uh, Sega? Uh, Bernie Stoller. Yeah, well, would that make him the, uh, like, Vince Russo? He's the of, Jamie uh... Kellner. He's, he's, <laughs> no, he's the Jamie Kellner of Sega, uh, okay. I think, actually. No, don't hit Garfield's girlfriend. <laughs> I don't yeah, really that, know what no, I was supposed to do That bonus stage is tough. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm supposed to, uh... This is a very Earthworm Jim mini game as well here. Yeah, th- this one's a lot easier. Not enough so, cookies. I don't know. I guess so, I was... <laughs> it's not doing a great job of communicating what I'm exactly supposed to be doing. So but, make... or why I want to do it, I guess. But <sighs> extra lives. Okay. Right. So so Mega Visions um, is. Uh, something for is it cover like if Sega's because Sega's still a software publisher does it you guys cover current Sega stuff or is this strictly a, <laughs> a retro lot of Crusader gaming Kings nostalgia <laughs> football manager yeah. uh, football manager 2017 the answer is yes <laughs> um, just as an example our newest issue that just came out we've uh, got a Yakuza retrospective um, I think of the first game um, we've got Yakuza Zero review. Um, I think there was something else that was Yakuza in there. Um, <laughs> and of course, okay. like, you know, various other stuff as well. I'm really glad that sure. Yakuza is finally getting the, uh, the attention it deserves, kind of, with Yakuza Zero. I feel like people have kind of, like, whiffed on that series for a really long time. Well, they just apparently because they just it, reissued all the PS2 ones. Like they just yeah, did another printing of all PS3. the PS2. It, like they always reviewed yeah. really well. Like, and I played the original Yakuza and PlayStation 2 way back in the day. But it just seemed like maybe that series time has finally come, even though it should have been more appreciated in its time for how weird it was and how it looked like a cool take on uh, open world games that that it was. But. You know, the only one That's that I ever Garfield played. Related, so. <laughs> the only I'm, I'm one just... I uh, ever played was the was the the like feudal Japan one that wasn't even I forgot what it was called. It wasn't really a Yakuza game, but it kind of was. Yeah, it, it was. It was like Yoshi feudal Yoshi Japan, Yoshi. but they had Yakuza characters playing yeah. the right. parts. Yes, yeah, it's the yeah, same yeah. dude from Yakuza, but it's. Uh... I had I I, I never played a Yakuza game until Yakuza Zero. I did a review from that standpoint over on Sega Nerds because uh, Chris he was uh, doing the one for the magazine already. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's just skyrocketed. Yakuza is like probably my second favorite Sega property right now, and it's very high on my just list of games. I'm just very high on it right now. I wish I could afford those other things, but we got like the Switch and Zelda coming up, so it's kind of yeah. I don't have a PlayStation <laughs> priorities. 4, so I don't know when I'll ever play another one, but that first one was really cool. Um, um, it's cool that people are finally talking about that. Oh, yeah, the, I, I got into it because of Project Cross Zone 2. I got interested in the characters there, and it's just like, you know, okay, maybe this is worth looking at, and then I'm finding out more. The worst thing that ever happened to that series is when somebody compared it to Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Because when well, it that, came when out that happened, when Grand Theft Auto was at its like height of popularity and originality, and like Grand Theft Auto it, dominated the conversation in the late PlayStation Two era, and any well, open world game after that was like a Grand Theft Auto like game. I'm not even sure how open world you can really say it is in comparison. It's overall, it's, no, it's just. Very uh, that's why it's not fair. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not a Grand Theft Auto fan, so I mean, as soon as people were saying that, like I tuned out of the conversation. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like a tremendous injustice because okay, people who like Grand Theft Auto, whatever they're looking for from that, they're probably not going to find it in Yakuza. Yeah. It's like and, an action RPG set in a city more than a Grand Theft Auto type of a game. Yeah. Uh, and anyway. uh, I mean, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, really, uh, it, it reminds me of, like, 
say it reminds me a lot of uh, believe it or not Capcom's uh, Ace Attorney games and just the tone mm-hmm. and like that explains why like you know they f- uh, fit so well in Project Cross Zone because uh, you had Phoenix Wright and Maya Faye they were like uh, there and they were going to like uh, you find out that once upon a time they'd uh, represented uh, Goro Majima in court and <laughs> Of course, there's also like Tekken involvement there. I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but it just meshes so well. And it's like there's a definite kind of a, I think, more of a crossover appeal there than with Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, different. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should probably talk about Garfield. Yeah, huh? let's talk a little bit about this Garfield yeah. game. I've played 20 minutes of it now, so I'm an expert, obviously. Uh, <laughs> obviously. Well, you yeah. gotta love the uh, Garfield's Halloween special inspired stage here, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah this is the, the same uh, the same costume. But here. you can also see, like, there's a hell of a lot more time and effort put into this Garfield sprite than this monkey sprite, than this monkey sprite <laughs> which is really ugly and kind of terrible looking. Um, like you Coffee can see says, uh, either the, the, the time the or budget constraints uh, put into the the like uh, that were put on this, but um, I think the chicken looks part, good. Yeah, the chicken looks okay. Uh, for the most part, like I, this game is totally fine. I would say so far that like you can play it, which is more than you can say for a lot of other licensed games of this era. Yeah, like the level for sure. design for the most part makes sense, and the controls are pretty good. He's a little like the way he slides a little bit when you're trying to make jumps is a little off, but you have a yeah. pretty generous health bar. It's not like you're doing Mario type precision jumps. So yeah, it's than, pretty forgiving. Like, yeah. Do you want to like talk about? Just kind of tosses you out of the water there. Yeah, you, you want to talk I'm about playing on um... kitty difficulty, and then there's another one called normal. So I don't know if maybe oh, okay. maybe they're those are instant death if you play on normal. I don't know. But, I don't uh, think they're instant death on normal. I'm pretty sure that's what I played. It's, it's been a long so, time. <laughs> if you, if you Kitty is about the default real... setting too, so I don't know if that's I don't know what that means. But if you want to talk about real bad licensed uh, 16-bit games, just wait for the next episode of Same Name Different Game. Yeah, or watch man, the got, fucking episode. I got a of this couple of I Little Mermaid. Oh yeah, that was real bad. Yeah, too. that was <laughs> this some is... pile of hot garbage. This is so yeah. this is much better than that. Yeah, say. yeah. I would say that, so, you know, it's totally, a, a totally playable. It's probably, I have to say, I haven't played a lot of Garfield games, because like I said, by the time there were a lot of Garfield games coming out, I was kind of over Garfield as a, you know, place to get humor. Like, I had already moved on to Kids in the Hall was, and Money Python and stuff like that. But um, There's one on DS that I heard was pretty good that I really wanted to try, but I never got to. But beyond that, I haven't played too many. Yeah, I think there was an odd PlayStation 2 game that didn't come out in North America that yeah. I've been wanting to play, too. Yeah, I know that I was looking through some of the lists. There's one that looks like some kind of a like a mystery kind of a thing where John's girlfriend is missing and Garfield and Odie have to go find her. That sounds, it sounds bizarre. Weird. Yeah, it looks yeah, like maybe more of an I'm, adventure I'm, kind of a game, which maybe makes more sense that know, might be like the PS2 a, one that, I'm sure yeah that was a Playstation 2 one so uh, okay. Coffee Coffee says uh, I don't know Yakuza is now. the modern day River City Ransom totally lost yeah that is a totally apt comparison that's, yeah that's pretty fair um, I would say it's funnier than River City Ransom, all told. But well, it has writing <laughs> that, that, in that's... it, which is something <laughs> River City Ransom doesn't really have any of. Um, yeah. Does it have cartoon butts and eating coffee mugs whole though? Because no, I mean, but you can make a chicken like the leader of your uh, real estate. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Thing, which is pretty good. Um, all right, I'm gonna check out some codes here, um, <laughs> and we'll yeah, check out should... some of the other levels. Because uh, it seems like this is very much in the vein of like a Bart's Nightmare or that Porky Pig's, Pig's game where it's just like themed levels that, you know. This seems a lot better than Bart's Nightmare. Uh, from everything yeah, I've heard. I, mean, and from, I never I played know. Bart's Nightmare, but everything I've seen of that and my having played this, I would say this probably is better. Bart's Nightmare is it totally is one of the better Bart Simpson or one of the better licensed that Simpsons is games. An so incredibly low bar to clear, my will. friend. Yeah, I was gonna say that's not exactly a AC high bar. Up, down, up, right. Um, oh. you know, we were talking about Tom Kalinske. One of the things I seem to remember, I think it was like mentioned in Game Pro or something. Oh, uh, I forget what show it was. Uh, I don't remember if they had E3 at that point or not. Um. But there's like a presentation. They were talking about Garfield. Tom Kalinske was there. Uh, Jim Davis, you know, he's they had him on stage to talk about the game a bit. And one of the things he says is like, um, apparently, I guess he's a video game fan. And he talks about like, you know, the uh, all the 
hours of enjoyment he's gotten from uh, like uh, Zelda and Mario. And I think uh, they said that you could uh, see Tom Kalinske actually mouth the word like uh, whoops or something just <laughs> off stage. <laughs> Nice. I think it's okay to like games from both systems. Yeah, at that time things were pretty hot though. <laughs> yeah, things were pretty that, tense. That, not then. <laughs> yeah, I never really like. I was a Nintendo fan because that was what I had, but I didn't think Sega Genesis was like sh like shit or anything. Right. You know? But I mean, if yeah, you were, if you were, like from a corporate perspective, right. like now if if go if, for the uh, yellow orbs here, don't go for the blue. Blue speeds you up. Okay. And I'm on a delay, so that warning yeah, may have come too late. Yeah, it's too late. Too late. Yeah, but uh, all right. Um, you know, if if now, if in their E3 presser, you know, um, you, you know, uh, who I don't even know who it is, who it is the. It's not Jack Tretton anymore, but whoever the head of you know Sony's U.S. branches came out and was like talking to some celebrity and they were like yeah man i love halo like that would be like a cringeworthy moment i don't know i don't i feel like people nowadays just wouldn't give too much of a shit only only idiots on the internet would care at this point yeah um, you see a lot more respect between the different companies now yeah Cape not Pat, that they don't get their jabs in if you recall the whole uh used game thing on xbox one yeah. when they announced it yep so now I have throw fish bones and I have tusks. Um, yeah, so fish. for the most part, yeah, like this is a pretty good looking crab sprite. Um, Garfield <laughs> has nine lives this stage. <laughs> um, Cave cat. Uh, I was just like, the only thing that I don't like about this game is like the fact that the power ups and some of the enemies have that. Um, like Joe was talking about that CGI look, that late '90s 16-bit era CGI look. I know. It's, it's like it's. I don't actually dislike that aesthetic that much. Like I, I don't mind the Donkey Kong Country or whatever. But um, when you pair it with the really excellent sprite art of Garfield and the yeah. really good animation, it just looks really out of place. Um, I, I didn't mind it at the time. Uh, I know what you mean. Of course. I mean, looking at like how sharp it is here, I think that kind of actually detracts a little from the graphics. Probably. Yeah. Uh, similar to Donkey Kong Country in that regard actually yeah Donkey Kong it, was, it was just made for like you know that kind of blur the tv had yeah well it's yeah it's a, a, a smaller resolution etc cetera, etc cetera. some curves yeah that too. Thing, some scan lines all that stuff but um, um, i've just never like the emulation of that stuff always feels inauthentic to me like it's either i either have to be playing it on a uh on the real deal, or oh, okay, I read this fish, I guess. It's like Donkey Kong Country on the uh, Wii U Virtual Console. Uh, I don't think it looks very good up on the uh, oh, big screen at all, but on the gamepad, it looks a lot closer to like how it's supposed to look. So. Yeah. I think when you sharpen that stuff up, like when you sharpen pixel art up, I think it usually looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this uh, is when you kinda... sharpen up the 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 that CG, the weird CG stuff. I think it just looks like mud. Like, yeah, just, you know, all the all the flaws of like, because it was sort of smoothed over by the not great visual fidelity of like CRT televisions, where you were right. kind of tricked into thinking like, wow, that looks like Toy Story. And then when it's sort of dragged out into the bright light of day, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, it's like, oh god, this looks so bad. Why did I ever think this looked good? AC Hi. down up right. Let's see what this boss is of this level. Um, so I'm trying yeah, to think of think. what else. Um, I don't know if there's trying to think if there's anything else like Garfield related. I was I I loved Garfield and Friends quite a bit back in the day. Um, Love that show. Yeah, that was a really good, that was a really like good cartoon. I think that that I could probably watch that and not be embarrassed by it. Was it just, but like, is it because you love the U.S. Acres segments the most? <laughs> I actually kind of did like those, although I know people don't like them. I I like these them. days, but I, yeah, I actually I have a picture on my DeviantArt account that's. Uh, probably one of my more popular ones which isn't saying much in the grand scheme of things but uh it's like basically a dark wade duck <laughs> okay yeah it's exactly what it sounds like <laughs> um, um but yeah I, yeah there's just like garfield part of it was me aging out of garfield and i think part of it was also garfield got bad in the way that uh 
the Simpsons got bad the longer it went on. Like, Garfield was never, like, a bastion of, like, high art or whatever. Like, Jim Davis had always sort of intended it to be, like, it's, it's like Snoopy, but for people that like cats or whatever. Um, which I think is a totally fine and valid, you know, way to create it, especially since he seems to have a pretty, uh... Oh. Okay, let's sit down here. Uh, like, like people know you know what Garfield is, right? It's just the thing to make kind of make you chuckle a little bit. It's not really designed to make you. It's a newspaper comic strip, you right? Know, think deep thoughts about so everything. Um, give me a laugh. Yeah, and I still I feel like it still is kind of like that sometimes, but most of the time I just kind of I there was a period in the like. Um, in the like early 2000s where it was like really cool to hate Garfield. Yeah, that was always uncomfortable. Yeah, where people like <laughs> were like wrote like there were a lot of like scathing articles written about Garfield where it's like, "No, man, this is just like a product, man. You don't understand. It's not real art." And I just I always felt like, "Yeah, I think most of the people that like Garfield probably are aware of this." Yeah. Um, By the way, speaking of uh art um are you familiar with lasagna cat um i don't think that sounds familiar but i, I don't youtube channel that recreates garfield comic strips using guys in like garfield and od costumes okay yes i have seen at least gifs of that well the it's kind of back and it's uh <laughs> strange. strange as ever um... strangery there was isn't those... there one? Isn't there a thing where they somebody takes out all the word bubbles from Garfield and it's just like John talking to himself? Yeah, yeah. That I think they removed. That was Garfield without Garfield. I think. I well, that's when they called. took Garfield out together. Garfield minus Gar called. Garfield is what it was called. Where they took not just the word, not just the speech bubbles, but like Garfield himself is out of the picture, and it just makes John yeah. look like the saddest, loneliest person. <laughs> um, and the thing's practically official now too. I mean, Jim Davis liked it. They uh, published a book uh, with it. I mean, it's like, <laughs> just got a whole thing going on. But yeah, the ones where uh, they remove Garfield's speech bubbles are also really good. I like the I like the look of this is pretty cool. This, like, noir yeah, this, Garfield, yeah. pre-Sin City, orange thing in a black and white world look is pretty good. Um, I don't think this is pre-Sin City, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, th think, I think it might be. I I really don't. I don't know when, they came, when did the comic come out? Yeah, I think the first Sin City book came out in like the right. early nineties. Oh, was it? Okay, I thought it was. Or like even 90s. the late eighties. Uh, okay, 1991. Oh, okay. So nope. What's up, Odie? Okay. Um. But um, yeah. The, there's a uh, actually a. I hesitate to call it a webcomic, but I guess for lack of a better term, that I uh, read in my uh, rotation each week called uh, Square Root of Minus Garfield, where they just do very strange things, like with Garfield strips. That sounds like a modern art nightmare. <laughs> it's, more, it's more like dank meme nightmare, but not quite memes. It's You really just got to kind of look at it, like if you look it up. But this I get a the kick worst out. boss fight I've ever been a part of. <clears throat> I definitely appreciate that all the boss fights kind of have a kind of a gimmick to them. They're not just wail on things Stomp until three it times. dies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, the, the pirate, the skeleton pirate guy, was pretty simplistic, but yeah. Uh, let's see, AC up, down, up, right. Oh, nice. um, about the Mega Visions thing. I don't know if I should like plug any of like my part for that. Yeah, you or... should. I think we're <laughs> yeah, we're probably getting about ready to uh, to wrap this up. So yeah, it's ten okay. after. So hey, you should at least go for the last boss. But um, anyway, the um, yeah, the uh, some of the stuff I do there. One one of the columns I do right monthly is uh, Confessions of a Nintendo Fan. Uh, which is basically just kind of like, you know, okay, I was a Nintendo fan growing up, and it's kind of looking at the other side of the fence and just kind of compare, contrast some stuff. Uh, originally, I was supposed to be, like, playing more of the, um, like, you know, it'd be, like, a way for me to play, like, classic Sega games, like, you know, that I'd never played before because, you know, growing up Nintendo. Hasn't quite reached that point yet because I've just had other stuff to talk about in the meantime, and uh, I've started doing some other reviews, so... Mm -hmm. You know how stuff changes as it goes, and uh, I also I've also been doing uh, visions from the past, which is basically looking at Sega um, and other magazines and uh, 
you know, stuff over the years. Like I looked at a uh, issue of um, Sega Magazine from the UK that had uh, Daytona, the first issue of Sega Visions, the first issue of the official Dreamcast magazine so far. Nice. So if we wanted to check is this, out Is this Mega the last Visions. stage of this, or is there more past this Egypt stage? Oh, I forget off the top of my head. Like okay. I said, got the different stages and the different uh, versions, so I forget. I think this might be? All right. Because this is pretty clever. This is another, like, like this is like the... <laughs> the <laughs> I forget what her name is with the, the witch in Dark Souls, like, environmental traversal puzzle boss kind of a thing. Um... Anyway, yeah, this game is totally fine. I I wouldn't say that I am loving my time with it necessarily, but it is a totally playable licensed game that seems completable, which is also another like I made some legitimate progress in a half an hour, so that's pretty cool. Um, it plays fine. It looks pretty good aside from the uh, the the weird combination of uh, sprite graphics and the CG stuff is a little flashy, but. Um, yeah, but there's not too much to that, at least. Yeah, let's see if there's one more level. So, uh, David, if we were to want to check out Mega Visions magazine, where would uh, uh, where would we do that? <coughs> uh, that is a good question. Just because I don't remember the specific URL. Okay, yeah, uh, it is uh, megavisionsmag.com. And uh, if you go there, you can get previews of issues. There's a sample issue. Uh, even have forums over there. All right. And what about you? Because I mean, you like uh, you do Mario's <laughs> hat and the Mega Man homepage, and uh, I mean, you're no, 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 no. I, I, I don't do Mega Man homepage. <laughs> uh, I do the Mega Man Network. Mega Man, Mega homepage, Man Network. Mandy Pa. Sorry. She's been around like way longer than I have. <laughs> Sorry, I confused my Mega Man fan sites. Yes, uh, Mega Man Network. Um, I don't want anybody to think uh, I'm trying which, to steal uh, Mandy's thunder. <laughs> no, no. Which you've been uh, gracious enough to. Um, uh, post some of uh, my my work over there. So, oh yeah, um, always happy to do it. I mean, so, these, these days uh, it's like all about the fans, really. Yeah. So if we the were, fans. you know, if we were wanting to uh, follow your exploits in general, how would someone do that? Well, let's see. Uh, we mentioned Nintendo Force Magazine. That's one. Um, Mega Visions is another. Uh, a lot of my um, other stuff is basically just go to. Uh, nightworks.net uh, n-y-t-e-w-o-r-k-s uh, dot net uh, basically that's a hub it links to poisonmushroom.org uh, Mario's mm -hmm. Hat which is uh, Canadian gaming news and reviews um, the Mega Man Network is linked there uh, my uh, wife's site uh, Tiny Girl Tiny Games uh, that's also there and uh, also one that I haven't I really need to pay more attention to is uh, the pre-order blog, but <laughs> uh, turns out getting uh, like you know fully detailed pre-order information on a lot of stuff is uh, very time-consuming. Mm. Indeed. Uh, and, and you're PR, on PR isn't as helpful as I'd like. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you're on Twitter, correct? That is correct. Uh, L B D underscore Night Train N Y T E T R A Y N. It was the 90s. <laughs> um, and there was time for clacks. Um, <laughs> so... And if you can follow our site on Twitter as well, at OnTheStick, and of course, go to OnTheStick.com and all that good stuff. So, uh, Eric, do you have a final verdict? This Genesis or Genesis isn't worth... Uh, this your... Genesis, totally media, middle of the road. Um, <laughs> it is a totally playable and fine uh, licensed game. Uh, let's see, the big board, I started a list, although I haven't actually numbered it yet, since this will be the <laughs> definitive list of the greatest Genesis games of all time, but this would be, right. like, below, like, below Thunder Force 3, but above, um, <laughs> The Little Mermaid, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly I played really good stuff for this, I haven't really delved into the, to the bad side of the Genesis. Um, I enjoyed. I actually enjoyed this more than Revenge of Shinobi, which would probably not be a popular opinion, but... Um, no, the comments in the YouTube upload of this are going to be bad if you... <laughs> <laughs> but that game has a lot of blind, like, bullshit blind jumps and stuff, and this game's just a little easier on a person that hasn't internalized it from when they were eight years old, so... Um, it's a little more enjoyable right off the bat, but, um, yeah, it's, it's totally fine. 
cool. The so. the Little Mermaid you mentioned, I'm assuming it's not like the NES game. No, it is not. No. It is not at all similar to the NES game. It's made by a different team. It's a it is a total hot pile garbage. The NES game is totally fine. Joe and I spent a lot of time talking about that on the uh, Sorry, on, that, on that, episode. that episode. So, but um, all right. So uh, you know, whatever. Thanks for hanging out. I forgot to turn the autofocus off on my camera, so my face is probably super blurry all the time. <laughs> as I bob in and out. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.